Okay, we're going to follow up our AGMA bending stress uh, calculations from last time with AGMA contact stresses. So this picture here is um, the one on the right is the one that would be more related to what we did last time with the AGMA bending stress. You can kind of see this uh, beginning of the failure and then it cracks all the way across. So this is your tooth breaking off of the gear. Um, so this would be the bending stress. The contact stress is going to look more like what's on the left over here with the, it's called pitting. Um, and so basically um, little parts of the gear are ejected out of the gear. And so you end up with not necessarily all the time is it going to be this giant pit like on this particular picture. But a lot of times there will be a line of pits or um, maybe multiple little pits. Um, but they're little holes in the surface of the gear. Um, so what might have happened there is something like, um, remember these are contact stresses. So when you have uh, a contact stress, let's just have a circle for our gear. Um, actually, it doesn't have to be a gear. Let's just say that these are round cylinders of any kind. Um, and let's have them in contact with one another. <clears throat> when they're pushing together, remember there's a little um, area underneath the surface. Maybe we'll make it a little bigger so you can see it. Um, underneath the surface there so that um, there's a higher stress beneath the surface. And over time, you know, as you uh, these things spin around and make contact, um, it is possible that this little area, you know, it ejects somehow. And now you've left with a pit in the surface of whatever is rolling around there. In this case, it happens to be gear teeth that are making contact over and over. Uh, remember, there's no endurance limit for fatigue contact, um, so repeated contact. Um, the other thing that happens here that um, will affect one of our um, factors later on is the um, more you press these two together, the larger this contact patch becomes. You can imagine, um, well, let's, let's draw a new set here. Um, you could imagine that if you had barely touching, you know, just barely touching, that there's a very tiny contact area. Um, but as you bring these closer and closer together, then this contact area, there's going to be more overlap. So, you know, you bring them closer together and now my circles are not going to deform, but, uh, you can get that same idea. Look, now there's quite a bit of contact, uh, area. And so that contact area changes the more pressure, uh, these two, whatever they happen to be, these two round curved surfaces in contact with one another that contact patch grows depending on how uh, much pressure is applied to one of, of between the two surfaces. Um, and that'll give us an interesting unit later on in our uh, process that we're gonna go through here. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out now since we were drawing circles, we might as well draw some more circles. Um, but the pitting is uh, this subsurface uh, higher area of stress um, and over time, with no endurance limit for contact fatigue, then that stress is generated and then it's released and generated and released. And over time, that causes this uh, chunk to eject and cause pitting like you see over here. And it, a lot of times it occurs in a line. Um, this one does have a, you know, a bigger piece missing beneath it, but you can kind of see the line across there, particularly on gear teeth I'm talking about here. The reason for that is as gear teeth are um, mating with one another, you know, as they as they touch one another, then uh, they let's say these are our two gear teeth. So this this one is going to come in, and you can see their relative motion is one direction, and then it reverses direction. So it goes one way and then back the other way. Since it reverses direction, that means that at some point in there, if it was going one way and then it changes and goes the other way, at some point it stopped relative motion you know there's zero velocity um, and when there's zero velocity that is a problem for lubricated systems remember we did uh, journal bearings two or three uh, lectures ago and they relied on that fluid moving uh, around in between the journal and the bushing um, if there's no motion if there's nothing in there causing that uh, pressure to build up then contact occurs you know if your if your journal was just sitting in the bushing 
with no nothing spinning around, then it would just drop down and touch the bushing. Same thing happens when you have no velocity, no relative velocity between those gear teeth. That that instant when they stop touching, or well, not stop uh, touching, when they stop. Uh, moving relative to one another so they one direction and then it goes the other direction that point where it stops and it doesn't you know stop for long at all but there's a, a instance where there's no relative motion um, that is why a lot of times you will see that line across uh, gear teeth of pitting I mean you can see the top of it here on this picture um, is that's the line where this gear tooth interfaces with whichever one it matches with um, and uh, has that instant of zero velocity and the zero velocity means there's the film the lubricant film has uh, disappeared at that point um, and there's contact between this gear tooth and one that it's mated with at that particular time um, and so you will see a line across there a lot of times um, so <clears throat> this agma contact stress works very similar to the agma bending stress in that you have an equation and a lot of factors that uh, go in to either raise the stress or reduce the strength or those sort of things. Um, and so let's let's go ahead and get our equation out here. Um, just so we remember, in case you didn't watch the last video, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a uh, gear, the larger blue one, with 30 teeth, pitch diameter of five inches, diametral pitch of six teeth per inch, and a pressure angle of 20 degrees and the pinion having 12 teeth and the other stuff is well a, a two inch diameter pitch diameter and it obviously it has the same pressure angle and the same pitch diametral pitch um, and so we went through last time and developed uh, the factor of safety for bending and we did all of this you know you'd have to go back and watch that whole video to see what we did here um, here's the agma equation for uh, calculating bending stress according to AGMA. Um, a lot of these factors in here will be used in the contact stress equation. So K0 or well K0 is the overload factor. Vs, Km, a lot of those are going to be reused. F, uh, Wtp. Uh, remember last time also your book Shigley uh, is going to use W with a uh, superscript T we're, we're over in MathCAD, and I just couldn't make the superscript work the way I wanted it to, so um, I used W with a subscript T, but your book's gonna have this T as a superscript. Um, but that was the tangential force between the gears. Um, there was the allowable stress, according to AGMA, um, and we ended up with a factor of safety of 3.6 for bending. Now, we're gonna do a very similar process and calculate the factor of safety against pitting, or this contact stress. Um, so we're trying to avoid this situation. The first one, the last time video, uh, was trying to avoid this situation. So now we're trying to avoid this. All right, so the equation is on page 738 in the 10th edition anyway. And um, let me make sure that it is, oh yes, there's two of them. It's equation 1415. And uh, the reason there's two is there's one for U.S. units and one for SI units. Uh, we're going to keep using the uh, U.S. units since that's what this other rest of this problem was set up in. Um, so we'll use that one. Uh, so we have sigma. Again, they just use sigma here, but it's not a straight up stress like you would normally compare with a material property. We are going to have to calculate uh, a, a similar um, strength for pitting or contact. Um, let's do this as a symbolic equals W T um, let me make sure I'm looking at the right equation here so that I don't get the wrong one um, in fact I think I was about to write the wrong one I was about to write the one for that we just did um, so this is actually equation 1416 not 15 equation 1416 1415 is the one we just did with the bending stress so let's do this one. So we need a C, and again, it does have two sets. It has a US set of units and a SI set of units. And you'll see a lot of the factors are the same, but the variables that relate to the uh, forces and things like that are different so that you don't confuse the US version of how you get this factor with the um, uh, SI version. So C dot P, whoops, I think it's a lowercase p, kind of hard to tell. So, oops, times 
did that backwards. Let's fix that. Times the square root of here's wt. Um, here is k, the overload factor. Here is kv, the dynamic factor. We have ks, a uh, size factor. We have times km over dp times f times cf over i. All right, so we'll have to go in and some of these we're at least familiar with from the last time, but some of these are new ones. Um, I guess the first one we encounter is cp, that's a new one. So why don't we deal with that one first? CP, um, let's see, we could do it this way, is an elastic coefficient. In fact, this is the same elastic coefficient if you have contact uh, in the earlier part of the um, uh, Shigley book, you know, in chapters, I don't remember what chapter it is, but it's the earlier part of the book, uh, the first half of the book, uh, same CP, so elastic coefficient there. Um, and we're going to, calculate it the same way that we would. Um, but I do believe they give us an equation here. This is the one that has the odd units. Um, actually, do we have to go back to the other chapter? Let me, I'm looking through the book right here to see where we're gonna have a calculation for CP. So I can tell you the equation number. Well, let's see. Well, there are a lot of equations in here, so I don't want to miss it. There, well, actually, you can calculate CP. Um, I think what your, the book does here in, in this particular chapter is uses a chart to value uh, to predict the value of CP. Um, so let's look at that uh, because I think your your chapter fourteen uses a book earlier or uses a chart earlier in the book. Uh, there's an actual equation where you can put in Poisson's ratio for the two different materials. Um, you know, you might have one pinion that is steel and then a gear that's another material or vice versa. Um, or maybe they're different alloys of steel. Um, and although the different alloys probably wouldn't make that much a difference in uh, Poisson's ratio. But it's based on the elastic modulus and the Poisson ratio, ratio of the two materials in contact. So what material is the pinion made of and what material is the gear made of. But your book actually goes in and... Uh, oops. Here we go. Find the. Uh, here we go. Um, let's see. Is this it? This is it right here. So table fourteen eight. Notice you've got a, a row, column over here of pinion material, and then you've got uh, several columns of gear material. Um, we haven't actually talked about what our pinion and gear are made of. Let's just say they're most both steel. So you would find steel for the pinion, and then steel. For the gear, and there, there, there actually are two here. So there's the top one is. Let's see if I can. Oh, that didn't zoom the way I wanted it to. <laughs> let's not do that. Let's see about this. There we go. Um, the top one is in U.S. units. The bottom one is SI units. So 2,300. You do have to look at these units though. Um, Where is it going to tell me the units? Oh, here it's at the top. Um, so this elastic coefficient CP, RZE, if you're in the um, SI units, uh, the units on it are square root of PSI. So that relates back to that variable contact patch. The more you press the two surfaces together, you, you, you increase the amount of contact between them. Um, and this uh, square root of PSI relates back to that. Um, and so 2300, if you calculate this number with the Poisson ratio and modulus of elasticity for steel, I think you get something like 2284, 2285 square root of PSI. 
um, uh, here they're giving you a, a you know a more round number. So we're, we'll just use the one out of the chart. So table 14.8 uh, is where you would get this if you're going to read it out of a chart. If you want to calculate it uh, because you have a specific Poisson ratio and modulus modulus of elasticity that you know, um, then you'd have to go back uh, earlier in the book and get the actual equation equation to calculate it with. Um, so here we'll just use 2300 for CP. Oh, I'm over in MathCAD, so you can see what I'm doing. Square root, uh, well, 2300, I don't know what it's going to do, MathCAD, with my units of square root of PSI, but we'll let it go and see. It didn't complain. We'll see. Um, hopefully, that means it'll work out for us. Um, okay. we Let's look at this. We already have WT, so let's just so we know. And we want it in pound force. This is the tangential force. Um, you know, kind of the force that's pushing horizontally on a gear tooth. The overload factor we already have. We just set that to one. Um, this is the one where if there's some shock loading or anything that might um, constitute an overload, so it's not just smooth running, you, the gears are always at the same speed, that kind of thing, then um, you would put a higher number in here. Um, but uh, we're, we're using the overload factor of just one. Um, KV, dynamic factor. We did actually have a number in there for that, 1.299. Uh, um, let's see if we can scroll up and find where we calculated that guy. Um, there it is. Um, so it was equation 1427. Um, well, it's actually several string of equations. First, you had to know what your quality that says dynamic factor. The whole thing, KV is the dynamic factor. Uh, QV is your quality. Um, and so we set our quality at five, which was towards the lower end. The lowest end, I think, is around three or whatever, with the highest end being around 13. Um, and so we're at the lower end of these, means they're not precision ground gears. Um, and then you calculate a, a value for B based on that quality. Then you calculate a value for A based on that value of B, and then you put both A and B into this equation to get a dynamic factor of 1.3. So basically, the better made your gears are, the lower this number will be, and your stress would be lower. Um, so we, we, we already calculated that. It's the same value. Um, KS, the size factor, this was optional. Um, S, there we go. And uh, they, you do have a way to calculate it. If you want to, uh, there's a book uh, equation. Um, it says that you can just use one, though, if you didn't have a reason to put that value in there. Um, KM, whoops, M, 1.16. Let's see where we calculated that one before. Um, there it is. It was the one that had all of these values for CMC, CPF, and so all of those different values. It took us a while to calculate that one. Remember, it was all of this, the load distribution factor. So it had to do with where, where the teeth crowned um, and all these different shapes uh, of the, the teeth. It had to do with the shapes of the teeth and things like that. Um, and so we calculated that through this lengthy set of coefficients. Ended up with 1.16. So we have that one. Um, let's see. I think Well, we have DP. That's, well, hmm. Oh, maybe that, maybe we used a capital P. Maybe that's why it's, no. Maybe we never actually typed it in like that. Let me check. How did we type it in last time? Or I guess we didn't actually use that last time. Um, but this is the diameter of whatever gear. Normally you're interested in the pinion. Um, I guess we never actually, no, it is right there. It's right there. DP, two inches. D, capital P. I'm not sure why it's uh, complaining or not recognizing it, but we did use capital P, so let's put a capital P in there. I'm not sure what's going on with this one. Let's see. Maybe sometimes MathCAD just likes you to do things twice. There we go. All right. Um, so we have that. Um, if you were for calculating the pinning on the gear, we'd use the diameter of the gear. Um, F, we have that. That's the face width. We, I think we set this as a half inch. Yes. Um, 
and that leaves us needing these two um, this CF and I so let's get those um, which one do we want to do next I I think is the one I did next in my notes I believe or did I do CF or did we already have CF no we don't have CF all right oh okay CF is um, just mentioned in your book uh, let me see if I can find it it's in a section uh, 14 9 I think yeah let me show you get that out of the way so um, here it is surface condition factor um, it's one that uh, it depends on several things you know surface finish residual stresses work hardening um, but then it tells you this uh, let's zoom in on that so you can get a better look standard surface conditions for gear teeth have not yet been established at least of 10th edition for this book so um, unless you have a reason to put a number in there greater than one it tells you to just put in one so we're gonna put in one um, because we don't have a reason to think that these uh, effects exist in our setup so it's kind of one of those you can if you know something about your setup after the fact you can put that in um, but there's not a not a standard way to do it so we're just gonna leave that at as one um, I um, so remember last time in the bending stress equation we had this J geometry factor for bending I is the same similar thing but for contact stress so it is the geometry factor for pitting resistance um, and there, there are two equations for it they're in um, section 14.5 so I can show them to you here they are over here um, equation 14.23 and uh, it's two parts and the two parts aren't unit based they're based on are these external gears or internal gears so these are external gears our teeth are on the exterior of our gears um, internal gears would be like a ring gear remember when we did the uh, ring gear with the planet and suns um, the ring gear had teeth on the in inner surface so they were all pointing inwards um, these are both external gears so we're going to use the equation for external gears. So looking at our book, that is uh, this top one over here. So let's write that one in, in MathCAD. So I equals cosine. Um, now in here in your book, they have uh, phi sub t. And so, um, whoops, I have to use f, don't I? I'm just going to use phi or as the pressure angle. Remember that was for us. Well, I thought we put that in. Did we not put that in or how did we name maybe let me see what we named it. Um, pressure angle. Maybe we never actually put it in, but um, it is in here. You can see the PA is 20 degrees. Um, so it is a 20 degree pressure angle. So maybe we need to define that. There we go. Um, now, why your book uses the T on there is because it's the transverse pressure angle. Um, so if you have gears that are helical, so the, the gear teeth are not straight cut, um, they, they wrap around in a helix, not a full you know twist or anything, but they wrap around a little bit, then um, they are helical gears and you would have to calculate a slightly different pressure angle to get this transverse pressure angle a component of the treasure pressure angle um, ours are straight cut gears so they the gear teeth look like this where they just go straight across they're not twisted in any way um, so we can just use our regular 20 degree pressure angle um, so it equals this uh, let's see then what uh, times sine of that pressure angle over 2 times m in all of that plus or times times 
m g over m g plus one. So we got a couple of things we have to put in here. For some reason it doesn't like. Oh, maybe it needs. Maybe it wants. You know, parentheses around it. We'll do that. There we go. All right. Now it wants m in. Um, and what we're going to do there, let me just make sure, is call the load sharing ratio um, for straight cut gears like we have. They're not helical. This is just one. Um, so we can just plug in a one. And I believe, in fact, um, let's see if I can, well, we'll just hide that real quick. It says right here where MN equals one for spur gears, which is what we have. We have just straight cut spur gears. Um, so there's that. MG, this is the gear ratio. Oh, lowercase m is what I used. Uppercase G. So it is the number of teeth on the gear divided by the number of teeth on the pinion. So for our case, that was 30 divided by 12. So two and a half. Um, so we should be able to solve for this guy. So we get this little uh, unitless uh, factor to put in here. I think we have everything. CP. All right. So let's copy this, paste it, and change it into something that can calculate. See what we get. Uh, we don't want it in Pascal, so we want KSI. 81 KSI. Now again, you can't just take this 81 KSI and compare it to a material strength like you would get in the back of the book. So we need to calculate a contact strength just like we had to do up here where we did a, a, a bearing or a bending strength for the AGMA equations. So let's do a contact strength for AGMA. Um, this is Let's see, page 742, I think, is where it's at. Let us see. Yeah, it's up here. So, again, there's two of these, one for U.S. units, one for SI units. We want the one for U.S. units, and there's got a couple of new things in there. So, let's write, uh, it, they call it Sigma C allowable. Oh, didn't want to do that. Dot. All right, uh, let's write it in as a symbolic equation for now. SC, so that's um, going to be the allowable contact stress number over the SH, that's our factor of safety against contact. All of that times Z dot N. Remember there was a Y N? This is the similar thing for um, contact. Um, so it's the stress cycle factor. For contact um, over the KT, that's the same KT as it was before. Actually, ZN is times uh, CH, and all of that is over um, KT. CH is the hardness ratio um, between the gear and the pinion. Um, KT, that's temperature factor. Last time we set that at one because we didn't know anything about it. This being at elevated temperatures above 250 degrees Fahrenheit um, times KR. That was a reliability. Last time we set that at one also, which corresponds to a 99% reliability. Um, so we've got a lot of these already. So let's get the ones that we don't have. ZN. So this is the um, stress cycle factor. So we need to go to our charts here. Oh, you weren't watching me type that in. This is all I typed in. I just typed in the equation out of the book. Um, so let's see where we can find the chart we need. Here is ZN, the stress cycle factor. It's another one of these where um, if you are using a, a cycle, number of cycles more or less than 10 to the seventh cycles, you have to uh, adjust the number. Um, if you're at 10 to the seventh cycles, then it corresponds to just a one for the ZN number. Um, we were at 10 to the 8th, I believe. Let me make sure that we actually were at 10 to the 8th. Um, that would have been on where we did Y. Yeah, we did cycles of 10 to the 8th right here. 
So um, we're going to have to use our equation. So we're, we want to get this number right here. Um, it is a range. So you have to decide do you want the lower number or the higher number. In this case, we're trying to calculate a strength. And, um, and this Zn is in the numerator. So to be more conservative, we want the smaller number. Um, so we're going to use the one that corresponds to this equation right here, 2.466 number of cycles raised to the negative 0 0.056. Um, so let's see if we can get that in MathCAD. Let's see, we were down here. Zn equals um, 2.466 times uh, cycles is what I called it in MathCAD. It's N, capital N, in the actual book. Raised to the negative 0 0.056. So there's our factor. Notice it's a lower than one number, but it's in the numerator over here, which uh, will make our strength of our against pitting weaker. So that's more conservative than using the one that would give us a little bit larger number. Um, CH. Oops. This one is the hardness ratio factor. Um, your book just says that um, if, uh, if you're using uh, the pinion, if you're dealing with the pinion, which we are, then you just use one over here. If you're using, if you're trying to calculate this for the gear, which normally has more teeth, so if you think about the, uh, the gear and the pinion, they may be made of different materials, but um, ours are not. Ours are both steel. Um, but in general, the pinion has a fewer number of teeth than the gear. And uh, so the gear distributes all of the forces amongst more teeth. And so it's usually not the one you're concerned with as much as you're concerned with the pinion. Um, so if you're concerned with the pinion, then you put a one in here. But if for some reason you do want to calculate something on the gear, maybe it's much, much weaker or something, I don't know. Um, and so you, you would use a different number. Uh, that you would get out of your book. We're just going to use one for the pinion. Um, let's see. So that gives us, we already have KT, we have KR. Oh, we need SC. All right, so this one, um, we're going to get, this is the allowable contact stress. We need to go back to the book for this one. So here we go. It is going to be um, SC. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, scrolling through all the charts. Here it is. Um, be careful with this one because there's another chart or two other charts that look very similar to this. One for S, uh, can you remember what the letter is on that? The SF or ST, I think, um, for different uh, material. This is the one that goes with bending. So do make sure that you're on SC, which we're still not. There we are, SC. Um, so we were on grade one and we had a hardness, I believe it was 250. Um, so we will use, you could just go and try and read this number off the chart. It looks like it's at like 115 or something. Um, or there's an equation right there that we can use. We're gonna use the equation since we have, uh, why not? Since we have the Burnell hardness. So 322 times that hardness. Um, plus, oh, and we had to, actually we had to go in and multiply this times PSI to make it work in MathCAD anyway, plus 29,100 PSI. So, and then we put in KSI, 109.6 KSI. Um, and that gives us everything we need. We have SC, ZN, CH, we already had this, already had this. Um, we want to calculate the factor of safety and we're gonna set uh, this stress that we just found, the contact stress, um, as what our allowable is, and we're going to back out the factor of safety that we have. So let's let's do that. Let's copy this, and first let's change this to something to evaluate. Oh no, no, not first. Sorry. Let's undo that. First, let's solve for C eight as the factor of safety S H. All right, so there we've solved for S H. And um, this is going to be the factor of safety equals this, uh, S dot H. And for this sigma C allowable, we, and it doesn't know what that equals, we're going to set it equal to this number right here. So we're going to say that 
sigma c allowable equals, we just called this one sigma, so we'll just use sigma right here. All right, and now we have our factor of safety against pitting. Let's see what it is. 1.183, so much lower than our bending stress, which was like 3.6 or so. Um, so we are much closer to not safe, although we are above one. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful with this one. This is a factor of safety against stress, but since it's nonlinear, it's nonlinear because when you press harder and harder, that contact stress uh, patch area grows, so it makes it nonlinear. Um, we couldn't just take this 1.183 and calculate uh, how much more torque or how much more force, WT, the tangential force. Um, we couldn't just multiply that. Um, this is related to stress. So if we want to relate this factor of safety to forces, we actually square it. So um, we could do something like S. I don't know if your book uses a different value for that. Let me see real quick if they change the um, variable. I don't know that they do or if they even mention it. Let's see. Um, no, I don't see anywhere. Oh, well, all right. So it does say on page, let's look in the book so you can see what I'm seeing. Get that out of the way. So it, on page uh, 759, it does go in here. Here's the equation um, solved, basically the one that we just solved in MathCAD. It looks a little bit different form, but it's just the way they solved it. Um, and remember to compare SF with S squared H when deciding whether bending or wear is the threat to function. Um, so, uh, and then for crowned gears, which uh, create a different little bit of, their contact patch is already a smaller area because they're crowned. Um, so that uh, it compares with S cubed in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, they're cubed if you're doing with crowned gears. We are not doing with crowned gears. All right, so um, we could just square this thing, S dot h oops got to use capital h squared so 1.4 so we have a little bit if we're looking at uh talking about the um force or torque that we can you know multiply we could go with 1.4 times the torque or the force um here we could go with 1.183 times the stress so you just have to be careful that you're um, not using this one to multiply torque or force or something like that. Um, and that's all we have to do for uh, AGMA contact stress. Once you've done the bending, a lot of those variables carry over into the contact stress. There's just a few that we already solved here, the I. Um, and was that the only one? No, that we did. There were others, but they were just set to one. And so it's uh, NCP. We did, uh, you can calculate that one, remember. Um, we just looked it up in a table, though. Um, so if you calculate it, you get a slightly different number, which would go in and change, uh, you know, these numbers slightly. Um, okay, I think that uh, gets us through AGMA. That's the last we'll talk about gearing um, or calculating stresses, contact stresses, bending stresses, and gears. Uh, this is uh, generally how it's done is with this AGMA process. Um, you just have to... Be sure that you remember when you do one of these AGMA equations that you're comparing the AGMA stress to an AGMA strength. You can't just go grab the strength of a steel material out of a chart somewhere and compare to that. You have to go and calculate the AGMA strength. Compare that with the AGMA stress. Um, okay, that uh, should cover us for gears, and we will see you next time. I think we'll talk about um, brakes, clutches, things like that.